The Isaac Casino has reopened. Now that we've absolved ourselves of all moral issues, it's time to gamble. It's time to engage in, in a little bit of, uh, let's call it a synthetic vice. I gotta get my randomizer up. I also, I have not separated my save files yet. So this is high stakes, okay? Prepare yourself. I don't even know if you're ready to see what you're about to see. As I send this over here, first let's let's see who we're gonna be today. We're going to be regular Lilith to the Lamb. Okay, regular Lilith to the Lamb. That's that's interesting. Let's start the prediction. Will NL accomplish his objectives? Objective one, or outcome one, yes. Outcome two, no. Start prediction. There you go. Are you ready for this? <laughs> Are you? <laughs> I mean, it's it, it, everybody's got to start somewhere, okay? Everybody's got to start somewhere. We're starting from a 15 streak. Why does NL sound different? Yo, I think you're going to laugh. I think the baby hit my mic button. Is this better? <laughs> Sometimes when I have the baby like on the computer chair, like she smashes the button. It's actually better. Oh my god. Sounds the same. It definitely sounds there. I don't know, man. Whatever. Might be USB port stuff. Either way, it's regular Lilith to the lamb. Here we go. Like there's a button on the front that goes from like unidirectional, so it just picks up the sound coming from me. Omnidirectional, so it picks up this picks up more sound from like all directions. And then um, I don't know what the third one is actually. It sounds the same and slightly different. I'll take it. I'll take it. Sounds clean. Picks up all sound everywhere. Dude, I'm on like cloud nine today. Can I tell you? I don't know if this is recent or if this has been around forever. Hey, KY Jellyfish, thank you for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Um, I, this this might be new. It might be old. Okay. My. Oh, it's because I said Cloud9. That's why you're saying all that stuff about Cloud9. It's because I said I was on Cloud9. Um, I was on Audible last night, right? Before bed, I always put on Audible. Use code Hardcore History for your free audiobook download. Uh, I have many books on there, many long books that I, I don't say that they're long in order to make it seem like, oh, I'm so smart. Um, but rather because I use them to fall asleep, so the longer they are, the less risk that I'm going to wake up to silence and then have to start it up again. Uh, hey, 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 hey! Um, but when I went to Audible today, something was a little bit different. Something was just a little bit stranger. It, it said, hey, we added some stuff to your Audible subscription, check it out. Look at all these Audible, uh... Hold on. Look at all these Audible originals that are now included in your subscription. And I looked at it and it was like, unfrick your life, how to stop giving a frick, tell everybody to frick off, how, how to, how to uh, frick up uh, your workplace, etc, etc. And I was like, no thank you, no thank you, no thank you. How to give the middle finger to your haters, you know, all that stuff. But then there was one that, that it caught my eye because it was a great courses audiobook course on medieval myths and legends talking about King Arthur talking about Robin Hood talking about what the heck even is the Holy Grail That's, I mean, that's really all I gotta say. Like, if you find yourself with an Audible subscription and nothing to listen to, give it a try. It's a cup, isn't it? I don't know. I was, like, half asleep as it was as I was listening to it, of course. I believe it originally started, perhaps, as, as actually a silver serving tray. 
and it is not actually a cup, maybe? Something like that? What was the name? I don't know. <laughs> to be honest, I can't remember. It was like the great courses. It was it's not Mother Teresa's Diva Cup, you you freaking troll. The holy plate does sound lame. I can't deny that. I love the great courses stuff, and can I tell you, I know that this one was recorded oh, in the pandemic, which I think is actually I mean, it's not good that the pandemic happened. Like, I'm already probably going to face enough controversy just for being live today. Let's not say that it was a good thing. However, for the great courses, the fact that it was recorded in studio, I think, is better. Because the problem with the, the in vivo classroom editions of the great courses is every single episode starts with... Which is the... It, it, it's just, you know... The audience applauding for the professor, which is just insane to me that they applaud at the start of a lecture. You don't even know if it's going to be good yet. Um, and then at the end of the lecture, they applaud too. And then when the lecture ends, it goes like... Uh, and it's uh, like... If you find yourself just falling asleep when that's about to happen, welcome to waking up, right? But these ones is just like, you know, a lady in a recording studio going, Hey, I'm going to talk about Robin Hood today. And nobody claps. And it's, it's a dream. I guess this is waking up. Dun, 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 dun. Back in the summer of 60. I always thought those songs just worked well together. Okay, we're going to the lamb. We could take deals with the devil. Some songs just naturally mash up. I know I've talked about it many times. You know what gets me? I actually, like, with the baby, I find myself accidentally doing the Star Wars theme a lot. But I'm trying to think of what's... I think it's like at the end of Twinkle, Twinkle Little Star. It's like... Twinkle, twinkle, up above the world, I like it. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. Da 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 Like I I I find my brain wanting to do that every time for some reason. I have no idea why. At this point we might as well take both. They screw you. Whatever. I, I want to see more angel deals. I want to see more devil deals. I just want to see more deals, man. Just call me the negotiator. My man's got a triple shot of espresso. I I actually feel, I feel a little like lethargic today. I woke up a little late. If I, if I got some energy, then, you know, it's synthetic. I'm happy to have it, but... Hoi. How little? I don't know. It's probably like six hours. It's not bad, but like, I like I I fell asleep at like midnight. Then I woke up at like one because I was like, you know, my throat was kind of like weirdly dry. So I I went down and I got a glass of water. Then I woke up again at like six. But it was one of those weird wake ups where I was like, wow, I felt like I had ten hours of sleep. I must have slept in. And then when I looked at the clock, I was stunned. It was like when, you know, the, the clock strikes midnight and Cinderella turns into a pumpkin again. Like I, uh... Hold on. Yeah, yeah, let, oh, maybe let's not check it. Um, we'll, we'll think about it. I don't want to lose my golden heart yet. But, um... It was like I was so alert and then I looked at the clock and realized it was actually super early instead of late. And then immediately my brain was like, oh, actually you're tired. You're not alert at all. Like, I think I, I broke the spell just by looking at the clock. If I hadn't known, I think I could have gotten up right, ran in, uh, right, ran in there. Scooby-Doo. I could have been, uh, I could have been alert there, but my brain actually went like, oh, sorry, we're wrong. You're tired. Um, and then I went back to sleep and I slept in <laughs> by like an extra half hour accidentally. It's when you hit that REM cycle just right. Absolutely. 
That's why I'm, I've, I'd am i like to announce I'm a venture uh, capitalist now. I'm a venture capitalist. Hey, Polyphemus, that's pretty good. Um, and I've in invested my life savings into the new smart bed. Sleeping has not changed for the last 2,000 years. The time has come. We've revolutionized computing. We've revolutionized the grilled cheese. The time has come for us to revolutionize sleeping. It all starts with our proprietary microchip. It gets injected right into the base of your skull, uh, kind of straddling your cerebellum. That allows us to keep track of your circadian rhythm. Then, when you sleep, unfortunately for now, we do not allow belly sleepers and side sleepers. You have to sleep on your back. And that's so our proprietary iBed uh, biomechanical macrochip can slot into a spot on the bed that serves as a charging port. I do need to tell you, your dreams are being added to the blockchain. If that's a deal breaker, then just enjoy being broke forever. Um, it's just a necessary part of ensuring data transparency. And also we do sell the data to the Los Angeles Police Department, but you don't need to worry about that. That's part of the terms and conditions right there in the middle. Nobody ever reads those anyway, so no big deal. Plus two, plus two. I'm, play, give me my plus twos! Thank you, thank you! Wet Dream NFT, newly minted. Sure. We're, we're very much in a holding pattern on this run right now. We need, we need a lot more. It's not terrible so far. I mean, we got Polyphemus. That's, that's very good. Use proptosis bet. Dude, don't even talk to me. So, like, again, I woke up late. I was a little groggy while I was drinking my coffee. I was watching Dan play Isaac. There's your first mistake. <laughs> That's so rude. I apologize. I didn't mean it to come out, like, that mean. But, like, I... <laughs> so I was watching him play Isaac. The, the reason it's a mistake is not because it's not entertaining. It's because I said to myself, like, you know, I'll just watch this for, like, ten minutes until the coffee hits the bloodstream. And then, uh, my man spent, like, literally 35 minutes on the same floor. Uh, and at the end, I know you're gonna be like, what did he get out of it? Well, I will say at the end of it, he was like, this is the god floor, it's the greatest floor I've ever had. He got, a, a blood bag, Tech X, and PhD. It's a good floor. It, it's actually a great floor. Don't get me wrong. But is it, like, the best? Is it worth 35 minutes of your time on a run that's, like, already amazing? I wouldn't call it the god floor, personally. He accidentally spent an hour and a half on the next run going for a completion mark that he already had. Oh, man. <laughs> That's the thing, because according to Dan's, like, uh, his uh, chat commands, he could technically finish, uh, get all the unlocks in Isaac, in, in Repentance, by the end of 2021, if he gets two per day while streaming. And I was like, oh, two per day? Don't get me wrong, some of them are really tough. But that's not impossible. But then I realized that, like, no matter what, even on a run that's like a guaranteed win, he spends like an hour and a half on it. So I'm like, hey, there's no chance. Like this is just just to get like some of the Apollyon stuff. He's spending like two hours uh, on the run. Like when it comes to Tainted Jacob, like it's going to be... Even if he gets it on the first try, it's going to be hard for him to get two per day. Okay, so Tainted, tainted card. Always interesting to me. But it is worth noting, you know, Isaac's a complicated game. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of moving parts, there's a lot of items, so yeah. I mean, he, of course he has chat for a lot of things that I don't. I've been, I've been playing it for, been drinking it for years. I heard they recently added more hops. XX Judgment Card. That's five pills. Golden pill, I sleep. Five pills? It's a re it's actually a restock machine. <laughs> Pretty good. Really, really good room to have that on. 
Hmm. All we need to do, you know what? It's so simple. All we need is a tainted uh, lovers or stars card, and then we can create some item pedestals in there, and then we're off to the races. Yeah, no, it's it is an amazing card for secret rooms or angel rooms. Really, even like just item rooms and shops. Can you stop shooting for two seconds? You 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 d hole. I do. I I feel like I have to ask. Judgment. Tainted Judgment is restock. Would have been nice right here. Tainted... What... What Tainted card is five pills? Restock boxes will always spawn in item rooms. Oh, oh Temperance. Thank you, thank you. Always? It... Do I misunderstand the, the word always? Dictionary.com always. Without exception, on every occasion, every time. Boy, I sure hope somebody got fired for that blunder. What about the word spawn? I must admit, I've been keeping this a secret for a long time. It's time for the truth to come out. I don't know how to read. I've just been making an educated guess. I, I feel like I've got a great kind of barometer for what chat must be saying. I'm just realizing, like, it would really suck to be on the internet but not know how to read. And yet thousands of Call of Duty players do it every single day. Hi-yo! <laughs> Got him. And it was a joke at Call of Duty's expense, which means nobody can actually take offense to it. But if, if I said Genshin Impact, everybody would have lost their fucking minds. Doesn't anybody else see how frick this is? When I was a kid, I didn't know English, so I just kind of guessed. It is crazy, like, learning your first language is mind-blowing. Like, when you learn a second language, as an adult at least, I don't know if this is how it works as a child, but when you learn your second language as an adult, you kind of translate from your first language into your second language. It's still impressive and it's hard, but like, at least the process makes sense. How do you learn your first language? It doesn't it it doesn't make any sense. Like how can you learn what a word is without knowing what words are? Ask your baby. She understands a little English for sure. I don't think she can tell me that she understands it though. Like, I always, I, I have an uncle. Well, I don't know. I call him uh, my uncle. But he is my aunt's boyfriend, but they never got married. So I guess he's just like a guy I know. <laughs> I never really thought about it, but I guess. I mean, I still call him uncle, but I guess he's really just a person. Um, regardless, <laughs> it's this guy that I know. Like, when I was a kid and, like, you know, science came out, I got kind of into, like, aliens, right? And I was, like, he, he's, like, a like a Mathis-type paranormal guy. And I was, like, if aliens came down to Earth, like, how would we be able to communicate with them? And he would get so frustrated, like, talking to me about it. And I just, I was just, like, I don't get it. He's, like, well, we could start to communicate with the aliens... Like, based on the fact that there's, like, physical constants and stuff like that. Like, you know, the speed of light and the uh, acceleration due to gravity and, like, the number of, you know, pairs in the human genome or whatever. And I was just like, or like, what you know, what's, you know, if you have two things and you divide them by two, how many are in each group and so on and so forth. And I was, I just, even to this day, 
Like, I just don't get it. I just don't understand. He would get so frustrated. He's like, Dude, just look at how many, just look at the human genetic sequence. There's only so many bases. And I'm like, I was in like eighth grade, right? And I'm like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, man. Can't we just like point at a banana and I'll be like banana. And then the alien will be like gleep glorp. And I'll be like, oh, gleep glorp means banana. <laughs> They might not have bananas? Well, they could just make one up, man. Like, that's how a rival should have worked. They should have just brought objects to the to the heptapods. Uh, bring up, like, a slice of pepperoni pizza and be like, pizza. And then the heptapods will, like, draw some weird shit. And then you'll be like, okay, that means pizza. You're telling me they don't have pizza up there? I thought they were supposed to be advanced. Hands you a can opener. Get it? Get it? I mean, if they don't have pizza, then just go back. Thanks for calling them heptapods. I mean, that's what they are. They're heptapods. I saw that shit in theaters. Gleep Glorp. Yeah, man. Arrival? I'm, I'm inclined to say it. I, look, a lot of people are not willing to say it. I'm I'm not a coward. I confront difficult issues like this. Arrival, good movie. If you want to like cancel me for it or whatever, then by all means. I just I gotta stay true to myself. I gotta do what's right. Have you seen Contact? I saw it as uh, I saw it when it came out on home video. Uh, as a as a child, and I I enjoyed it. I was into space as a kid. I should watch it again. They definitely should have sent a poet. They should contact too. They did send a poet. And the poet, you might know him. His name? Hello, Jonathan. On <laughs> no, 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 no. On this space station, Jonathan, we live by a code. Did you ever finish the scary movies? No, like, I kind of... I, I washed out, okay? Uh, because they're really bad. Like, I, I just... I couldn't finish Scary Movie 4. So I, I was just like, it's just not good. So instead, I watched a, a very piece... Uh, a piece of high art starring Sean William Scott Brecken Meyer. Tom Green, Amy Smart, and the lady who played Jeremy's girlfriend temporarily in Peep Show. A little movie by the name of Road Trip. Is for the one with Michael Jackson. Look, you really want to talk about scary movie? I could talk your, I could talk your ear off about scary movie. Okay. You have to be more specific about which one has uh, Michael Jackson. Because there's... Michael Jackson shows up in Scary Movie 3 and he he does a, a dance fight. and it, Like, they get into a fist fight with moonwalking and crotch grabbing and he And like they make fun of his uh, nose. Um, and then I think... I think also as they're fighting... Charlie Sheen dangles him out of the window like Michael Jackson dangled his baby out the window and he goes like, hey, see, how do you like it? How do you like it? And then he runs off into the cornfield. That's right. Uh, and then in Scary Movie 4, which is like a War of the Worlds send up, um, he, Michael Jackson shows up and tries, this is just gross, but he tries to steal the main character's children. Then he gets hit by a, a beam of energy that sends his appearance back in time. So he like gradually goes from like 2000s Michael Jackson 
into like 1970s Michael Jackson, and then he gets hit with the beam one more time, and only his prosthetic nose remains. Like they really, they they went pretty hard on the Michael Jackson jokes in uh, in Scary Movie three and four. Like they, there's well, that's the thing in comedy. Like you know, there's no such thing as a sacred cow, even the king of pop. That being said, like I do need to say. Comedy in the 2000s was very mean-spirited, for sure. Which is why I'm uh, an asshole. <laughs> By the way, thank you for the raid, Daniel. Python. Python. I, I love trying to reverse engineer. You piece. I love trying to reverse engineer what... Uh, frick. What Daniel means... Like, how did his raid come about? Obviously, Python's got something to do with programming. Dan loves to talk about the... Bo Can't you just go into the Boolean? It's a very common expression. Big Chungus tears. So true. Hanged man turns us into tainted greed for a bit? Yeah. Regular greed. Okay. Good to know. Reverse engineer this. Hey, what? You know what? I allow the middle finger here. Nobody got the joke. Maybe because it wasn't funny. Maybe that, maybe that's a possibility. But in Dan's chat, I, I had to say that I was leaving, but I couldn't use a middle finger emoji because of the fact that, you know, Dan's chat is a little bit more wholesome. So I used pointing up. And everyone was just like, okay, goodbye. Nobody got that. I was trying to use it as like a middle finger. <laughs> yeah, pointing up is like, you know. I saw a tweet today. I don't know how valid this is. It, it was on like the Minions wiki. I've never seen Despicable Me. I've never seen a Minion movie. I have played... I've, I've drinking some bubbly with Minions on the, on the can. And I've also... I mean, Sulphur's really good. Hold on, I gotta let Tomo in. He's like, he, he's going crazy here. Tomo, come on. I, you, hey, what do you think? The reason I don't want you in the room is Kate has some packages in here that I don't want you to jump on and tip over. Hey, get out of there, you crazy cat. What are you doing? Okay, everyone say hi to Tomo. Hello, Tomo. Into the box, my son. There you go. And now he's out of the box, and here we go. This is, this is why these runs take an hour now. Tomo, don't, if you knock over the box. Tomo, Tomo, eh? don't do it, Tomo. You're barking up the wrong tree. <clears throat> well, I tried to ban him from the room, but then he was on the door going like. <clears throat> so you're like, what are you gonna do, right? Like. <sighs> It's my lot in life. This is my design. Dude, I take nothing. Tomo! Anyway. So, I I don't know the, um, the Minions lore, but I saw an out-of-context screenshot from the Minions wiki today that said, in the Napoleonic Wars... The minions fired a cannonball that hit Napoleon Bonaparte, and as a result, they were forced to flee to the Russian Empire, where they hid in a cave and formed their own society? Is this true? Is this a true story? That is correct. I thought Gru invented the minions? Tomo. It, it's They did it that way so that the minions don't have to explain why they didn't intervene in the world wars. What do you mean intervene? Like, hey, Tomo, what are you doing? Tomo, you can't be bumping into stuff. Oh, is, is Gru German? Like, is that what's, is that what's happening there? It was, there's a hardcore history episode about it. Sorry, you gotta go. You gotta go. 
So they had, they genuinely had to, or felt like they had to, make a, a post explaining their whereabouts in the First and Second World War. Otherwise, it would be assumed that they were part of the... the Axis. Okay. I, I also didn't really know um, that, like, the minions were expected to be a part of world history like that? If that makes sense. I thought they were just kind of like some cute little alien or lab created creatures or something. I didn't realize that it's like the Eternals where people are going to be like, where were you when Thanos uh, was here? Like, why didn't you help us when Thanos was here? Oh yes, we knew all along, sadly. Oh, there was a tweet that blew up this week about Harry Potter not intervening in the Second World War. Or Harry Harry Potter or like I guess Dumbledore. Yeah, Dumbledore, where the heck were you in the Second World War, man? Ah, it's not that big of a deal. At least that we had Wonder Woman on our side, right? I love that NL refuses to use Box of Friends. <laughs> oh my god, he's beating the door down again. Tomo, come on. You can hear him? He's, he's getting closer. He, he could come into the room if he didn't... Like, I don't want him to knock over the boxes in here, okay? Kate's got, like, a monitor. I don't want Tomo to jump on it and cause it to land, you know, front side down. Where's Lilith off to today? We're supposed to go to the lamb, but I think I might die of old age first. Yeah, I did see that that Marvel or sorry, Firaxis dropped their trailer for their new Marvel game. So it's like I you're saying as a deck builder. I, I assumed it would have some kind of like XCOM type like tactical isometric action as well. It's a gotcha. How gotcha? It is an XCOM. Apparently it's more like Fire Emblem. I'm kind of, I'm still kind of into that, honestly. But another deck builder, Resident Sleeper. I know, right? There's been like eight of them over the past decade. Snooze. Mm, no, thank you. Mm, yes, thank you. Yes, thank. Mm. No, thank you. We can do better. No, thank you. I've had bet. Name that movie. I've had better. I told you we could do better. I told ya. Meet the parents. Wrong. Liar, liar. Right. Pay that. Pay them their money. Legendary Ludwig has bested me once more. I'll just keep the devil for now. The Claw. It's the second Liar Liar reference I wanted to make today. When Dan was playing the Crane game, I wanted to talk about The Claw. It's also remarkable to watch Road Trip uh, with fresh eyeballs and go like, whoa, we thought those jokes were cool. But then also, like, on top of that, let's take, uh, to, to watch Road Trip and go like, Sean William Scott was so clearly, like, aping... Jim Carrey completely. Like, he, he's so clearly influenced by, like, a young Jim Carrey type situation. You mean Drew Carey? We don't talk about Drew Carey, okay? Is Road Trip the movie where they play Butterfly by Crazy Town? It's not. They play this song that goes, God damn right, it's a beautiful day. Uh-huh. No, we're not canceling Drew. I just he, he just gets me so hot and bothered thinking about him. 
That's Orange County. There, look, Road Trip, not a great movie. Couple of great moments. DJ Qualls is inspired in the film much better than he was in the movie The New Guy. Um, also, the scene where they're trying to jump the river in their car, and they go, you know, hey, come on, it's 10 feet. Bob Hope could jump this in a golf cart. I could spit over this gap. And then he horks up a big loogie and spits it onto the the exit ramp, and then the ramp just collapses, and the physics guy goes, better make it 75 miles an hour. It's pretty good. That's it's a pretty good... It's a, that's a good scene. Tomo, I can let you into the room, my man, but if I let you into the room, are you kidding me? You gotta not play with the boxes, okay? The movie is not woke, but it is a little woke. Sean William Scott has a prostate exam. Or not exam, sorry, a, a prostate orgasm. Okay, excuse me, Tomo, welcome, welcome, buddy. Okay, can you, uh, you just, he's, you gotta get in the box. Tomo, you gotta get in the box, man. It's, oh yeah. You gotta, you gotta get in the box. I'm just gonna hold a hand here for a second. You gotta stay in the box for a bit. As soon as I took my hand away, he's like, I'm jumping out of the box. Just go to sleep, Tomo. Just look, I'm happy you're here. It is like noon every day. He's like, I, I need pets immediately. Please, please, please. Tomo, he's fighting me. Just stay in the box. Okay, he's gone. My son. Look at this guy. He doesn't like to be held. My time, my time. Okay, now, back down. You doing okay? That was a good pet. If he gets in the cords, I'm gonna lose my mind. I'm gonna lose my, my damn mind. They do indeed dance to It's Tricky by Run DMC. Also, I realized, like, I my college experience was, was fun. Don't get me wrong. But, like, the, the college experience in Road Trip looks way more fun. Like, they go to a frat, and when they're at the frat, there's, like, a, a, a live band performing Tricky, and then there's, like, nine guys doing, like, a synchronized dance on stage to It's Tricky, and I was like, that shit never happened where when I went to school. It was all, you just say, like, you go to a party, and everybody's like, hey, do you want to play, like, you know, Flip Cup or Boat Race over and over and over again? Then again, I'm like, wait a minute, that's not true. I, I don't know, any any uh, any Queens alumni here? Oil thigh, the Banrigan, the Banrigan, gay, ah, Queens for college colors we are wearing once again. Soiled as they are by the battle and the flame. Yet another victory to wash away the pain. So gales go in and win. F yay! Anyway, um... My, my school has some, there's some weird, like, traditions in history. There's a, uh, a bar that you're only supposed to go to if you're an engineer or you're with an engineer. Forget what the bar is called, but every Friday? I think it was, like, Friday at noon, they had an event called Ritual, um, which was, like, the engineering time to get hammered. And at Ritual, they would literally do what I described from Boat Trip. Uh, there's that song that goes, na 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 Baby, give it up, give it up, baby, give it up. And then you would get on stage when they played it, and there was like, it was kind of like a Macarena-style dance that you would do over and over. Um, 
and then you would slam your purple leather jackets onto the ground and go sizzle like bacon frosh. Uh, what is, real quick, Dan says, what's a boat race? A boat race is a, a, a relay race drinking game where you have four people on your team and you play against four people that are across the table from you. Um, and you go down the line drinking a full red solo cup of cheap lager. You can only start, there's, there's two varieties of it, and we're going to the lamb. There's two varieties of it, okay? So, like, one variety is as soon as they finish their cup, put it down. Then you, uh... The next person gets to start. The other one is they have to put their cup down and then flip cup it, land it on the opposite side. And then the next person in line can start. It is, it is indeed a beer chugging relay race. In America, we call that drip drip. Look, they're, they're both silly names. Boat race doesn't make too much sense. There is liquid involved and it is a race. Drip drip, I don't know. That sounds like something you have to go see the doctor for. Drip drip. <laughs> Ace of diamonds, sure, why not? Got me a case of the drip drip? Oh yeah. Lots, I, I, you know, stop me if you've heard this one 20 times before. Lots of uh, drinking games that, you know, post-pandemic, really, like, they, you just gotta, re it, it illustrates that it was a different time. Um, you know, we used to fill an enormous bowl, like a two-foot-tall bowl with beer, and then put a little cafeteria cup in it with a little bit of liquid so that it floated and then go around uh, in a circle. Everyone would pour a little bit of their drink in the bowl. Or in the in the cup, I should say. And whoever sunk the cup had to p fish it out of the bowl with their hands and then drink the whole thing. It's pretty disgusting. Look, I knew some uptight people in... Uh, in university, and even they were playing it. We just had different norms pre-COVID. <laughs> People are like, that that's disgusting even pre-COVID. I guarantee you, if I offered you a seat at the table back in 2007, you would have been like, so true, I'm ready. Okay, give me Twisted Pair, that's just fun. I'm not willing to go any deeper than that. That's, it's a little spiced. I would have been nine. All right. Well, we wouldn't have invited you then. How'd you even get into our, our college house? It is crazy to think. Like, I was thinking about it the other day. I know this sounds like rude to Sips. I don't mean it to be at all. But I think Sips might be the oldest person I've ever met independent of them being like a family friend or like a co-worker and I mean that like sincerely I'm not he's not that old he's 40 but everybody I know that's older than sips is somebody I either met because of my job or my family I guess I technically I mean I don't mean twitch I mean like in an office situation I don't think I've ever met anybody over the age of 40 at like an independent, like in, obviously I've seen people over the age of 40 now and then. But like, I don't know if I have any friends that are older than Sips, if that makes sense. Yet meanwhile, Sips is only seven and a half, eight years older than me. But if someone was seven and a half years younger than me, I would be like, we're basically the same age. They're like, no! That's not true! You're a boomer! I'm a zoomer! We're seven years apart! It's a diff- we're two different eras separated! It can't be! Anyway, I'm just saying. It's less about Sips. It's not like Sips is that old. It's more like, I don't know anybody that's, like, older. <laughs> yeah. 
Like, he's not the oldest person on Earth, but I couldn't name anybody older. Like, you know what it is for, and I'm sure this is the way you think about it as well, right? Like, I, when, when you think about, like, if you're younger than me, this is the way you think about you versus me. And the me she told me not to worry about. Um, but, like, Sip saying that he was 16 years old in 1996 threw me for a loop, because I was eight. That's a huge difference. The idea that, like, Sips was 21 years old, like, when the first season of Survivor aired, it just doesn't compute in my brain. Because I was, like, a little kid, and now we're peers. How does that happen? Doesn't make any damn sense. Time? Yeah, I guess, but... <laughs> I'm just saying. It's just, it's just wild. You are the center of a protractor, so true. Survivor 41, debuting this month, will have the first castaway born after the show started. That's a milestone, for sure. That's like, did you hear that The Tonight Show recently lost uh, its last viewer that was born before the show started to air. Wait, where am I going? I was trying to make a joke about the fact that only nine-year-olds would watch James Corden, but I forgot if he's late night, tonight show, the after show, the late, late show. Why are you still awake? You still pay, you pay for cable? That's crazy. Help. Was that mom's knife? Yeah, you got a problem? It's not a good item, in so many ways. I did see the James Corden flash mob. I feel bad, because, like, Kate... Uh, there was a period of time where Kate uh, would, like, watch the... What is it called? Like, Crosswalk Theater or whatever, and sometimes she would link me to it. It's because she likes the Disney stuff, right? So when they're doing, like, songs from Aladdin with the cast of Aladdin, she's like, check this out, isn't this cute? And I'm so, like... Like, post, 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 cynical, irony, blah, 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 that I, like, can't enjoy anything sincere. Like, it has to be filtered through, like, 700 layers of context first. You see, this is a reference to uh, a tweet that was made several years ago by somebody who said, Tommy Needy Drinky. I didn't know you could destroy locks with this. If knowledge is the key, then just show me the lock. Drink a lot of soda, so they call me... Mr. Soda, that's right, you got it. But, um... Long, long story short... I hate it. <laughs> I just, like... I, I, I know that this is the meme that got tweeted a bunch, but if, I believe if I was stuck in, in the, the crosswalk uh, theater with James Corden, I know that you think that I'd be like, oh my god, James Corden, but I would actually be the guy from Parasite, just like seething behind the wheel. Like if, if there was, if, if I stopped at a crosswalk and Dan Behar, also known as Destroyer, was there and he was singing Kaput, I would be like, I'd be soy jacked out to, up to my whatever, right? But if it was James Corden singing like, be our guest, be our guest, I'd be like, can you get, get, get off the road, man, please. I'm just begging you to get off the road. I'm just trying to get to my doctor's appointment. <laughs> Everyone here hates that. Okay, in Los Angeles. I'm glad to hear it. What if somebody ordered four meats at the deli counter? I didn't want to say it, okay, but I was at the grocery store yesterday. I, w I was getting the ingredients to make a chicken and vegetable soup, right? I needed carrots. I needed celery. They're in the same little part of the produce aisle. Um, there was a, uh, a lady there. I swear to God, she took like more than 10 minutes to pick out a carrot. And I was just dying because like, you know, in a non-pandemic time, I, I genuinely have no problem just going like, you know, excuse me, just reaching in there or whatever, like squeezing. 
But because of the pandemic, I was like, oh, I don't want to like get that close to her, make her uncomfortable. And I, I, I guess maybe I just like don't have the cojones to be like, excuse me, ma'am, if you're gonna take forever to pick out a, a carrot, can I just like get a carrot instead? Like I promise, I'll be like two seconds. They're all the same. Um, so I, instead, I waited there for like, you know, I would say two minutes straight, which is longer than it seems. Um, assuming falsely or incorrectly, I should say that there is absolutely no way she's going to take that long to pick out a carrot. Um, and then when it dawned on me that she was still looking, I just, I like, I, I did the rest of my grocery shopping and then came back. Like, I, I, I was just flabbergasted. Happens so often. Yeah, I'm telling. Was she still there? No, she was gone by then. Also, did this is true again? It's one of those true stories that maybe seems fake because it, it paints her, her children maybe in like a negative light. Um, but I, I had the baby, right? She had two kids as well. I didn't point that part out because it makes her more sympathetic, which ruins my anecdote. Um, she had two very young kids. Uh, you know, maybe like three years old, four years old. And, uh, one of them came up to the stroller that my baby was in and said, Look, this baby has a banana, which is true. Uh, there, there's like a little banana stuffed toy that I keep attached to the crib. So that she has something to play with while we're going for walks. And then she said, This baby looks like a banana. And I was like... I had a mask on, so, you know, I, I couldn't react with my mouth, but I was like, excuse me, what the fuck? Basically, like, in my brain. Uh, and then I just, like, looked at the, the mom and kind of, like, that was my cue to get the heck out of there, because I was like, what is this kid talking about? And then I looked at my baby, and I realized she was wearing, like, a bright yellow outfit. And I was like, okay, you're lucky! You're lucky! <laughs> because if it were not for that, I would have turned that over and over again in my head, wondering what the hell that's even supposed to mean. <laughs> and in my head, I was like, you know, Donald may resemble a hot dog, but you're in an actual hot dog costume. Ooh, hello. Look at that. Look at that. Wow. I would not like to do a victory lap. Upstairs or downstairs? Oh, okay. I can get that. Look at this. Easy belief. 88% said yes. So I have to explain to my wife. People are saying show banana. Yesterday... When I was at the grocery store, a child came up to the stroller and said the baby has a banana because of the, the banana plushie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the child said, this baby looks like a banana. And I was like, what? Ooh, that's and the, not cool. Then I wheeled out of the way, and then I realized she was wearing a yellow dress. No. <laughs> she was wearing yellow dress yesterday? Yeah, like the yellow overalls. Oh. And I was like, okay, kid, you're, you're lucky. Was it the same kid who said, when I got onto the elevator, this kid said, smells like rice here. <laughs> I wouldn't know. I wasn't in the elevator then. But it's possible. Hey! This boy cannot be in here. He will knock this stuff over in a heartbeat. This is why I locked the door to keep him out. I already had to... This 40-minute run took an hour because I was keeping Tomo from jumping on this stuff. Really? Yeah, yeah. All right, let's pay out the believers. <laughs> Uh-oh. And then we'll roll the slash marker. That's casino ones, 